they are writing exams, you know, they have registered, but they will effectively start attending lectures next week because they are writing exams. So what I was saying here is, my name is Mr. Mpatsi. I'll be taking you through for taxation Zimbabwe syllabus for, 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 for the upcoming exams. Tax is one of the easy, these are my introductory remarks, you know. Tax is one of the easiest paper of all the papers you shall come across. The reason is most of the concepts that we will be learning in taxation are concepts that we can relate. The actually concepts you can relate. So it's a very, very easy paper. I'm yet to see someone who fails taxation after I've taught such a person. Of, uh, of a very, very long time now, I haven't seen someone who has failed this paper. So going by that benchmark, you guys are not immune to that. You are not immune to that. So you have to, to just follow suit. Okay, so, you know, noting that text is a very, very easy paper. So if you are talking to your colleague and if your colleague asks, what are you doing this coming semester? You don't say I'm doing, you know, text. Ah, not necessarily. You you mention another subject and then you say, "Do you want subject here, but not text?" You know that kind of thing. Do we talk this subject? Is you want to text because text is easy. It's not something that you should burden yourself with. I know from this you might not see it that way, but. As you get into it, you shall notice. You know, we, we, we do our taxation using ARIA tax periods or ARIA tax legislation. What it means is when you are, when you are, having, uh, when you are doing taxation for the, for in 2022, we'll be using the tax legislation which was prevailing in what? In 2021. So you may notice that some of the things you'll be saying are not the things you're actually doing Kubasa, because we do our text, we, 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 we learn our text uh, legislations or text provisions in areas, one year in areas. So get that. So if you are calculating PAYE, if you are calculating any other stuff, where at your workplace you are using 2022 legis text laws, the, the, some of them may not be appropriate in the taxation exam because we'll be using 2021 uh, taxation uh, legislation. Okay, so having said that, allow me to get started right away. Uh, allow me to open to open an Excel booklet here where I'll, from time to time, I'll be typing whatever I want to type as I see fit. So this is how I, I'll be giving you the notes. We give you the notes in this particular lecture. And we also record the lecture in case you miss. In case you miss, um, you can make use of the recording. So all recorded lectures are obtainable from my YouTube channel. I do have a YouTube channel, which I encourage you guys to subscribe. It would make a lot of sense if you subscribe to your says YouTube channel. So I will be sending links to the recorded lecture. I send it in the group. So today when we were joining the lecture, I realized that a lot of students were having issues in joining. All you have to do to join the lecture is to click on this on this um, class group Skype class group. Once you click there, you can just call the group. Everyone is called automatically. You don't necessarily receive a separate call from your tutor. All you have to do, you receive the call from the group. No wonder why most of you ended up joining. Okay, so. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still loading it up. Uh, 
allow me to just open my Excel workbook. Once opened, everything is ready to go. Right, it may take time to open. Okay, it is open. Let me zoom it so that you can, you can see it clearly. Right, let me zoom it here. Sorry, allow it to open, to fully open. Okay, it's opening. No, there's a document which is preventing it to open. What is this document? If I can close it, I'm sure I would have made a great show of effort. This document here, cancel. It is this document which is preventing my booklet from opening. Okay, so it is open. So first things first, uh, taxation. Uh, session 2022. Uh, sorry, taxation for 2022 exams. Exams. So it's a very, very short syllabus. So let me start by listing the topics. Today we won't do much because we are waiting for your colleagues to wrap up the exams. So topic listing, topic listing, very, very few topics. Number, the first one is gross income, gross income. That's the first topic. Second is two. Lease, uh, lease premiums and lease improvements, lease premiums and lease improvements, lease premiums and lease improvements. The third one is um, exempt income, exempt incomes. Okay, what's this? Okay, so I welcome you as you are joining the lecture. Seems my screen is blank. Um, are you guys seeing my screen? Those who are seeing what I'm typing, can you show by raising your hand? Oh. So that we we know whether, okay, Tafaz is seeing my screen. Um, okay. So if some are seeing my screen and you are not seeing it, normally it's, 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 it, it might be network issues. What I encourage you to do is to exit and join again immediately to reboot it. Exit the chat, hang up the chat and join again when you are having issues with the screen. Exempt incomes. Exempt incomes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hit the mute button, guys, whenever you, you have issues or you have got background noises. Deductions. Deductions. Prohibited deductions. Actions then question uh, for farmers. I mean tax computation, tax computation. Computation. Here we are talking of employment, employment and non-employment income. Employment. Unemployment income. Then 
uh, seven, and then talk of taxation for partners, taxation for partners. The one is eight, taxation for farmers, taxation for farmers, some simply for farming, and then capital gains tax, I mean, that's nine, capital gains tax, gains tax, and ten. Value added tax, value added tax, and then 11, tax administration, tax administration. So we have these, these are the core topics that we are going to cover as we wrap up our taxation syllabus. These are the basic topics. You know, as, as 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 you might be reading other scholarly material, or as you may come up, come across other scholarly material, this is core for a CCA. Though for other scholarly material like CIS, like other stuff, they have got mining taxation for mining. Mining. So if you are doing CIS or you are doing another course, you will you will need to arrange a separate topic for this, and deceased estates, deceased estates and trusts. But apart from these, the rest of the topics are the same. Okay, so what, what then are we supposed to do this week? Right away, let us get started. One, gross income. This is the topic we are going to discuss this week. But before before I talk more on gross income, I need to, to make some remarks. You know, we teach you taxation to be a good corporate citizen, to be a good, a, a responsible citizen. What do I mean by that? We don't want you to overpay your tax, right? And neither do we want you to underpay your tax. We just want you to pay the fair share of tax. In other words, we don't expect you to rip the commissioner apart, the commissioner of taxes. You know, in Zimbabwe, tax is administered by the commissioner of taxes, who is the Zimra, Zimbabwe Revenue Authority. So, Basically, tax is about what you get, which we refer to as your income. Then take out what you have to deduct your expenses and you get what is called taxable income. After you have obtained the taxable income, you then have to pay tax at relevant, at relevant rates together. That's, 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 that's the hallmark of taxation, that's it. Get you all, everything that you receive, less what your expenses, and then what you get, what you get is taxable income. So, when Pavano be a commissioner of taxes, the power, when I'm going to understate what they what constitutes income, can I overstate my expenses? And in so doing, you are not paying your fair share of tax. So taxation syllabus, they can go to the look. Chich no bonyazon's income. Chich no the exempt income, in meaning it's single tax. Chich no the deductions. And my expenses are not for me to deduct. We are chich no the prohibited deductions. At the single for me, there's expenses. And in final analysis, after what are also an taxable income? What takes? So that is in the good that can I want to business in mining. I am doing my incomes, my expenses, my exemptions. Can I want to farming incomes? Can I want to uh, partnerships and so forth and the other general businesses that we, we undertake? So you do notice that basically what is the objective of you being here? We want to conscientize you that you have an obligation 
to pay the fair share of tax, both at individual and at company level. Pay the fair share of tax. How do I achieve that? Say, you achieve that by knowing what are in what constitutes incomes, what constitutes exempt income, meaning those incomes which are not taxed. And lastly, what constitutes deductions? Because well, some expenses are not considered as deductions, they are prohibited. So that's the hallmark of taxation syllabus. So the first task is to tell you what is income for tax purposes. And this, top, this topic now is gross income. Uh, for interest, the sec gross income is actually section, it's section 8.1 of Income Tax Act. Though in your exam, we don't necessarily section 8.1 of the Income Tax Act. That's gross income. That's what we are going to discuss. Remember, tax is administered from time to time by the Act of Parliament, which is the Finance Act, which is announced by the Minister of Finance. So no wonder why we are saying Income Tax Act. So what, what really is gross income? So I'm typing here. So you can remember this video will be recorded and streamed. So you can choose to type your notes as well. Uh, this refers, this refers to amount. Received by the taxpayer, by the taxpayer from, from sources, from sources within, within Zimbabwe, within Zimbabwe or deemed to be from Zimbabwe, deemed to be from Zimbabwe, uh, except, except to the extent, extent to which, which such, such amounts are of a capital nature. This is the definition of what income, what gross income is. The amount that you receive, you know, amount you receive as a taxpayer from sources within Zimbabwe or deemed to be from Zimbabwe, except to the extent to which such amounts are of capital nature. So if you receive an amount which is of a capital nature, like a capital receipt, we don't consider it in gross income. You know, in as much as in accounting, you don't, in accounting, you don't say if you sell an asset, you don't say the sale proceeds are sales, no. Because that one is called a capital receipt. It's an amount which is of capital nature. All right, so, so below explanation of gross income. Detailed explanation of gross income. So let us, let us actually go with it in detail. Below is the detailed explanation of what we really mean by saying gross income. So the first one is amounts of capital nature. Amount, amounts of capital nature, capital nature include, include, you know, there are various amounts which are of capital nature, like 
proceeds from sale of fixed assets, proceeds from disposal of fixed assets, fixed assets, if a receipt which is of capital nature. Another receipt which is of capital nature is lottery win. Lottery win. You know, lottery, if you win lotto, we don't consider that as income. It, it doesn't go into gross income. The reason being, it's an, it's an amount of capital nature. That's the reason, it's an amount of capital nature. So we are, we are talking of lottery win, and another it's inheritance. Inheritance. Inaka, they know the inheritance. Paku gove wa naka pepa. Ukanzimari ku bank, each a pi waningi. That cash is not considered income. Rather, it's an amount of capital nature. You get that? Then B. There are some housekeeping issues which I had not said at the beginning. If you feel like asking a question, just type type your question in the chat on the bottom right of your screen. It's a matter of hitting the chat bar, and then you type your question. Get that? It makes a lot of sense. We are recording the lecture, so either way you get a link to the stream. We, after recording, we stream it on YouTube, then we send you the link. Here, the second aspect we want to talk about is amount. What do we mean in terms of taxation when we say amount? What, what does amount mean? So this refers to money. This refers to money or or any corporeal, corporeal or incorporeal, incorporeal asset. Which is, which is an ascertainable, ascertainable monetary, monetary value, the fringe benefits, the fringe benefits. Benefit these ones, we are going to discuss them later. Discussed later. So that's that's an amount. When we are saying amount, we are not necessarily referring to money for tax purposes. Otherwise, you say I, I did not receive the actual money, so I'm not going to pay tax. No. There are instances where we say you have received an amount even if it was not in the form of actual money, like fringe benefits, like you are using a company car. When you are using a company car, it's, 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 an, it's, 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 a, it's a corporal asset. There's a benefit that you are getting. When you are being paid airtime or you are using internet, internet at home, which is being paid for by the company, all this comes under amount, provided we can ascertain the monetary value of that benefit. Right, so the other thing is the amount must have been received, received or Due the taxpayer received by, I said, I wanted to say received by, or due to the taxpayer for his or a benefit. 
for his or her benefit. You know, if you if 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 we say you have received an amount, it must be for your benefit. It has to be for your benefit. So if you receive an amount uh, for something which belongs to, suppose you are a property agent, you collect rents on behalf of the landlord. Clearly, the rent that you collect, we can't say it's. It, 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 it has to be included in your gross income because it's it's not for your benefit, right? So what are we doing, say, you may ask? We are going through the specific explanations of this particular definition. Gross income, it refers to the amount received by the taxpayer from sources within Zimbabwe or deemed to be Zimbabwe in Zimbabwe, except to the extent to which such amounts are of a capital nature. So that's what we are doing. And we need to also explain what is called year of assessment. Year of assessment. Now, when you are assessing, for when you are talking of assessment for tax papers, it's the year in which your tax is to be calculated. So this is the period, this is a period of 12 months, 12 months from the 1st of January, 1st of January, 1st of January 2021. This is, this is the year of assessment that we'll be looking at. It's a period of 12 months from the 1st of uh, January 2021. This is, now we are now on D. Our definition of gross income here, you do notice, it mentions the word there are various words which are mentioned. Let me highlight them. There's a word here which is mentioned, like amount. So we have explained amount. Another word which is highlighted is source from sources. So we, we, we are going down to explain source and then accept to the extent to which these amounts are of a capital nature amounts of a capital nature that's another item there so let us talk about source of income source of income what do we understand by that when we say income is a source so so important so we we say because you know, certain incomes are stolen. We don't consider those. We consider proper incomes which have got a proper source. So a source is the originating cause of income. Originating cause of income. That's what we mean by source. It is the originating cause of income. Chakonzera kutuwane income. For income to be included in gross income, to be included in gross income, comma, it must come from sources from sources within or from sources within or deemed to be, to be within Zimbabwe. Within Zimbabwe. So we don't take income where the source is outside Zimbabwe or it's not deemed to be in Zimbabwe. Now, what are these words you may ask? Say you are saying deemed. You are saying within, and at some point you are saying deemed. You know, there is a source which is within Zimbabwe, like 
if I'm teaching you here, I'm in Harare and I'm, I'm, I'm generating this income from Zimbabwe. It's, it's obvious. If you are working at pick and pay, your salary is from Zimbabwe. It's obvious. But if you are working for World Vision, you are being paid from um, America. So your money is coming from America, but by application of the law, it is deemed to be within Zimbabwe. No wonder why it is taxed in Zimbabwe. Right. So that's a, a very, very important, important item there. So let's let us say examples, examples of sources of income. Examples of sources of incomes. Examples of sources of incomes. Let us start. I, I'm listing them here one by one. Uh, let's say one. Examples of sources of income. Let's say income from services rendered. From services rendered. Now, uh, suppose you are. You are you are, you, are, you are earning salaries and stuff. This is a service. You are, you are getting income because you are rendering a service. Like this. The source is the rendering of service. Is the rendering of service and is located where such services are rendered. Such services are rendered. You know, this is so important. The source is the rendering of service and is located where such services are rendered, e.g., uh, e.g., salaries and wages, salaries and wages, comma, uh, allowances, allowances, comma, bonuses. Oops. Comma. Gratuities. You, see. you know, that's that's the source. If you are working for pick and pay, and you are being paid salary, it is deemed to be in Zimbabwe because provided the pick and pay you are working for is in Zimbabwe. So if you are working for World Vision. Even though your money is coming from United States, the source is in Zimbabwe because you are rendering your services in Zimbabwe. Now, you may say, say, we have heard you clearly on that part. But what about a, an ambassador? We could see a Zimbabwean ambassador to South Africa and in Garden to South Africa throughout. Atimbuti to the outer Ranesha ambassador. So see at your chief. She tower Ranesha ambassador. Because the Anushi source is located where the services are rendered. Anu render my services in South Africa. Uyo manje uyo. Source is deemed to be in Zimbabwe because are outside the country solely for the rendering of services to the state. So we say if a person Zimbabwe, outside Zimbabwe, only, solely uh, for the purposes, solely for the purposes of rendering, rendering services to the state, to the state, e.g., an ambassador an ambassador then then the source is deemed to be from Zimbabwe so you get that 
if you are if you are rendering services to to the state like you are an ambassador we deem that the source is in zimbabwe so this whole thing continues if you, if you, you come to, to 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 say oh now you may say say what if i go to south africa for six months i mean for three months and i get i, I get a temporary job there for three months and i work for three months where is the source you know, if you spend less than half a year outside, we call that temporary absence. We call it temporary absence. So because it's temporary absence, we still say again, the source is in Zimbabwe. So we are now saying in case, in case of temporary absence, temporary absence, now you may say, say, what is temporary absence? Temporary absence simply means being outside the country, outside the country for not more than, not more than, more than 183 days, 183 days. Actually, let me let me say for less than 183 days for English to make sense. For less than 183 days. In case of temporary absence. So what is the temporary absence? Being outside the country for less than 183 days. You close the bracket. Income end during such a period. Income and and outside outside during such period is deemed is deemed is deemed to be from Zimbabwean source you get in that so important now you may say, say. So if you are saying, if I'm in South Africa for three months and I get a, a job there and I get salary, the income that I earn during that three month period is deemed to be from Zimbabwe. I get you right there, say, but tell me then, what if I was taxed in South Africa? Under the circumstances, you claim what is called double taxation relief. If you were taxed on the same income in South Africa, you then have to claim double taxation relief, meaning you will be granted a credit of some sort. But you have to claim it. Otherwise, if you don't claim it, you still get taxed. Now you may say, say, what are you doing? What are we discussing? It, 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 it appears I'm lost in the scheme of things. We are defining definition of gross income. And in the definition, we say there is sources. So I'm trying to tell you then what sources are. Number two, rent from immovable, immovable property. No, suppose you are receiving rent and this rent is from an immovable property. A property like building, a property like a holiday resort, a property like whatever. So, the source located in a country where the property the source is located in a country where the property is situated. So if you have got a building or a cottage, a house in Botswana, and you are receiving a rent from Botswana, we don't tax in Zimbabwe. Why? Because the source, the source must be deemed to be from Zimbabwe or within Zimbabwe. Now, in this case, it's, it's located in Botswana. So that we don't tax it. Three, 
rents from movable property. Now, let's say you have got rent from movable property. Now, yeah, uh, immovable. When you have to simple, commovable. Kutunz, we see, say, imagine car rental, like Impala car rental, for example. Charissa company is a native Impala car rental. You know, when I'm going to some motor, you end up Angola motor. From Zimbabwe to Angola. Now, the question is. Since motor young age travel, I'm not going to be a change of Angola. Tot here rent, I see in Zimbabwe. Can I to a portion and to fire travel in Zimbabwe? Total Zimbabwe portion, fire travel outside, to ignore. We will not administratively known it. So, under the circumstances, if you've got movable property, the source located in a country, in a country where Taxpayers' business is registered. Taxpayers' business registered. Important. Apa pano ne sabu unga ti unga apo sheni kumote ya ya enda kutunami biya penga ya muzimbabwe ya pamba maile jagadi ah no 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 it's it's difficult to do that. Saka na wini movable property. Unongo unongo chance out iyo impala car into ya tuyaka register kwa kana ili Zimbabwe source is located in Zimbabwe regardless of the fact that kuti moto ya chenda kwa I'm I'm showing you this this means so uno 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 uka investor in dividends. Who can invest in shares? Who want a dividend? Property. The source is the investment in shares. The source is the investment. Investment in shares. The source. If you invest in dividends, the source is the investment in shares. It is located. It is located in a country. In a country where the shares are registered, where the shares are registered. So this is so important. Uka 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 tenga ma shares which uka zwana dividend. To nongo to source the kwa ka register ma shares. Kanaka register from Zimbabwe then. Unongo lewa kuti unote from Zimbabwe. Now, if I have a man, you pick that panel power and loophole. Panel power, a lot of people want to want a loophole. Loophole, yeah, when they say, I say, one want a loophole because a care of what are which it for cocker is some machines and go on a source. One want to try to get a cheaper one in this cycle. Saka na Mauritius ine ine low tax rate like let's say Mauritius ine twenty ine ten percent tax. And we saw one tanga unotenga ma shares ku Mauritius. Kitra utwa kwa na dividend. Runo go tax kwa ni lower rate. Neku da kwa kuti tenge di chiti source ili located kwa waka register ma shares. Saka paka da riba kuti no rana risk ikiwa na wana indi samari kunze kwa yiku. Externalization of funds. So kuti te reduce that. Government in a, in a provision, a foreign company dividends are taxed. You know, you know, it is a encourage one who invest a country. They say, however, comma, foreign company, foreign company dividends, company dividends are taxed. A text goes at 20%. So if you receive dividends from a foreign company and you are in Zimbabwe, we tax you at 20%. The reason why we do this is 
we don't want a situation where we encourage you to invest outside at the expense of investing in shares in Zimbabwe companies. Four, five, royalty. 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 You know, most, most, most businesses and persons earn royalties. And I'm sure this is not new to you. If you are a musician, you know that if your music is being played, you earn a royalty on every music that is played. If you are a book, author, an author of a book, you write a book, as, as many as the publisher is selling many copies of that book, you know that you are going to get royalties from that. That's the royalty we are talking about. So if you if you invest in, in 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 that, we need to know where the source is because there are there are issues to consider there. For example, when you are book writer in Zimbabwe, you write your book in Zimbabwe, and then book you are publish for Australia. What I am going to see are royalties from Australia. Na, na publisher as many copies of books are being sold. The logical question is, where, which company then taxes you, the Australian or Zimbabwe government? Where is the source for the purposes of Zim taxation? That's what I'm saying. So you say the source on the royalties, the source Royalty talk of authors. Authors with labor. Authors with labor and intellect. Then it is located. It is located where? In a country. In a country where such with labor and intellect intellect were exercised 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 so this is so important if you write a book in Zimbabwe, let, let me give you an example. If a music, if music is composed in Zimbabwe and then published in South Africa, e.g. one composes music, if one composes music in Zimbabwe and then if one composes music in Zimbabwe and then publishes it, publishes it in South Africa, in SA, and get royalties from there and get royalties from there, then such royalties are deemed to be from Zimbabwean source. Such royalties are deemed deemed to be from Zimbabwean source. That's exactly what I'm saying here. Okay. As you can see, I'm saying quite a lot. Uh, can you type in the chat that you are getting what I'm saying? Just hit the chat button here and type. Say we are together. I just want to see if I've got listening ears with me here. Type in the chat I'm waiting.
Grant. Thanks for by. I can see we are together. I don't know where your colleagues are. Okay. Well, I trust your colleagues are also in sync. Okay. So you can see that text is very easy. Today I'm not going to say much because I'm I'm waiting for others who are writing exams and they want also to start doing taxation from next week. But I'm going to lay the groundwork so that I will send this video to them of what we have covered so far. So that's about, these are some of the examples about deemed sources. Deemed sources, you know. Then perhaps if I may put six Director's fees. Director's fees. You know, if you are a director, you get paid fees whenever you have got a board meeting. And we need to know now uh, how the taxation, the tax implications of that. So the source. is located where the head office of the company, the HQ, headquarters, head office of the company is registered. Normally, board of directors are found in the head office, so the source is located uh, when where the headquarters of the company is registered. So if you, are, if you are being paid the director's fees and the company is in Zimbabwe, these fees, the source is in Zimbabwe. What if you are a director to a company which is in South Africa? The source is South Africa. But in order to, you know, there are instances when you can be a director to a company uh, or, or I mean, or a company in Zimbabwe can actually have a director with, with outside Zimbabwe, it's possible. If you check, Econet has got plenty of directors who are outside Zimbabwe. So what happens then when we are paying a director's fees? What it means is, what it means is non-resident Non-resident di non-resident director's fees director's fees are paid net of withholding tax. I shall show you withholding tax. Now we can't say a director is based in South Africa and we give that director the full amount and then tell that director who is in South Africa to say, now that you have received your money, can you pay us tax here in Zimbabwe? No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make an administrative case if we do it that way. Rather, in, in order to aid administration, what we'll do, what we'll do is, if you are a director in South Africa and our company is okay, we headquartered in Zimbabwe, all we have to do is we pay you the director's fees net of tax. And if, if tax is withheld at the source, it is called with, if tax is charged at the source such that you get paid net, it is called withholding tax. So what is withholding tax? A tax, a tax deducted at the source so that the taxpayer receives the net amount. The taxpayer receives, receives net amount. That's withholding tax. So I was just giving you here some of the some of the most important aspects of gross income. So we are we are still continuing. Remember, we said the, the law is the 
detailed explanation of gross income. So if I may change the wording a little bit and, and, and word it like specific aspects of gross income. Specific aspects of gross specific aspects of gross income. What are the specific aspects of gross income? So they, they, there you are. All right. You know, you now know that gross income means money you are getting from sources within Zimbabwe or deemed to be within Zimbabwe, except to the extent to which that such amounts are of capital nature. You now understand everything. And you now understand what we mean by source, what we mean by a lot of stuff. So, number one, on specific items, let's talk of annuities. Annuities, so, so important. It's called, there is what we refer to as annuities, you know? Those monies you receive, which are fixed on a regular basis for a given period of time. So what is an annuity? An annuity is an, is an amount, an annuity is an amount, is a, is a, is a fixed amount, fixed amount received on a regular basis, regular basis for a given period of time, for a given period of time. That's an annuity. A fixed amount is a, a fixed amount received on a regular basis for a given period of time. So, e.g., e.g., being paid, being paid, uh, if you are being paid, say, 5,000, 5,000 per month, per month for eight years. That's an annuity. Because it, it gives, it, it fits in the definition. You know, it's a regular fixed amount, which is 5,000 per month. That's a regular thing for a given period of time, meaning for eight years. Now, uh, let us now have types of annuities. Types of annuities. Types of annuities. You know, there are various types of annuities which are at our disposal, quite a lot of them. The first one is a purchased annuity. A purchased annuity. Purchased, purchased annuity. Now, you, 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 you have now understood the definition of an annuity. That an, an annuity is a fixed amount. There's an element of a fixed amount which is paid on a regular basis for a given period of time. Paid on a regular basis for a given period of time. So how do you, how, how actually do you get to have an annuity? How do you, how do you get to have an annuity, meaning to be in a situation where you're being paid a fixed amount for a given period of time. The various ways you can have that. You know, insurance companies like, or even benefit companies like First Mutual, Old Mutual, they have got what we refer to as benefit funds. They do have what we refer to as benefit funds where they can approach you and say, look, we do have a plan with us that we, uh, we want you to purchase. I'm sure you have encountered that. They may say, look, you pay, if you, if you pay us 
pay if you pay uh, two point five thousand, let's say these are US or if you pay seventy five thousand, let me work them in in in, in Zim dollars. If you pay seventy five thousand now, when you get to age of forty, when you get to forty years, you will be entitled to receive an annuity annuity of um, let's say twelve thousand per year per year for twenty years. Imagine. You just paid seventy five thousand now, so that when you get to twenty to forty years, you get twelve thousand per year, or let me say per month, not per year actually, twelve thousand per month, per month for twelve thousand per month for twenty years. So this is called the purchase price of the annuity. The amount you pay now is called the purchase price. This is the purchase price of the annuity. Get it? That's the purchase price of the annuity. Now, the question that comes to mind is the taxation of this annuity now that we are 40 years. Let's say you, you, are, you have now reached 40 years. We are now getting the money. So there are two scenarios. A scenario, a, a scenario A is a new, the, uh, the purchase price allowed as a deduction. Purchase price allowed as deduction. This is, this is A, scenario A. Scenario B is when Purchase price not allowed as a deduction. And the purchase price is not allowed as a deduction. Purchase price not allowed as a deduction. Let me explain these two terms. You are the one who have paid this particular annuity. Let's say your salary is 300,000. Your salary, your salary is 300,000 and then the commissioner says look we are going to tax you on 300,000 so you get tax here tax oh the, the commissioner says less annuity that you pay less the annuity because we are saying annuity allowed as a deduction less the annuity of 75,000 less annuity of 75,000, such that you are now left with taxable income. You are now left with taxable income of 225. Taxable income, right. And then you are then taxed, taxed at, let's just say X percent. So today when you, by this annuity, your the purchase price of the annuity is allowed as a deduction. So when you are now getting the annuity of 12%, this annuity is taxed in full because you it the amount was allowed as a deduction here. Meaning, you remember. The 12,000 is the amount that you are now getting per year for 20 years. But remember, when you paid for that, it was allowed as a deduction. So when you are now receiving the annuity, it will be taxed in full. Now, on scenario B, let us now say scenario B, salary. Salary. It's the same amount here. And then, annuity nothing was deducted let's put zero and then you have got your taxable income so the annuity was not allowed as a deduction so this becomes taxable income so you get taxed at x percent like this 
Now, the question is on scenario B, which is this one, which I'm highlighting and shading and holding and put it in red. On scenario B here, when you are now receiving your 12,000 per month for 20 years, when you get to 40 years, surely the commissioner will not be fair if, if the commissioner is taxing you in full. Because the 75,000 was not allowed as a deduction. So there's no way the commissioner can take the 12,000 in full. Rather, the commissioner must only take the interest on that annuity, not the full annuity. Because I was taxed. Notice. Can I get amount I know be it was a deduction? It would Pandaka Tenga annuity in the tax because Irimum 300. I know this. So can I take a tax cop and take a tenga annuity? Can I go to an annuity? And the Japan refuge could take a ill in full. Caposhe in case of twenty five you are a tax for Gorilla and a tenga. Can I find a good piece? Do tax treatment of a purchased annuity. So uh, let me now delete this part. I was just illustrating. You now understand what I, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I wanted to talk about. All right. So, purchase the annuity. So, the issue is when a taxpayer purchases an annuity, when a taxpayer, when a taxpayer purchases an annuity, annuity and the purchase price and the purchase price purchase price was allowed as a deduction as a deduction from the taxpayer's income taxpayer's income at the time of purchase at the time of purchase then the annuity is taxed in full. Simple as that. That is, if the purchase price was allowed as a deduction from the taxpayer's income at the time of purchase, then the annuity is taxed in full. However, however, if price was not allowed as a deduction, if the purchase price of the annuity of the annuity uh, was not allowed as a deduction, allowed as a deduction, action, comma, then only the interest portion of the annuity, only the interest, interest portion of the annuity is included as income. Only the interest portion of the annuity is included in gross Get that? So, 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 the, the, the question is now, how do we calculate the interest portion? The interest component is calculated as follows. The interest portion, the interest component, component is calculated as follows. This is how you calculate the interest component of the annuity. You say interest equals interest, which is I equals, you say a P times N minus A. So all this, all this is. 
over n. So this this interest, the interest component is annual interest. It's actually annual. Annual interest. P times n minus a over n. Where? So please commit this formula to memory. You won't be given this formula. Where? Where? P is the annual payment. P equals annual. Annual payment. And then N is the number of annual payment. Number. Number of annual payments. And then A is the purchase price of the annuity. Purchase, purchase price of the annuity. That's your A day. So if, if, if you want to go by, by this, let me give you an example. Let's ask you an example. An example. All right. So we are we are we are we are together in this. Let's say Miss Miss V purchased Miss V purchased an annuity an annuity five years ago five years ago for for eighty thousand. Miss V purchased an annuity five years ago for eighty thousand. Then we say on one October, on one October, October twenty twenty one, she became entitled. She became entitled to a monthly annuity annuity of she she became entitled to a monthly annuity of uh, of let's say twelve thousand dollars twelve thousand dollars per month per month i mean twelve thousand dollars for four years for four years, I'd already said per month. How much? Oh, let's say, then say, given that, given that the purchase price was not allowed as a deduction, the purchase price was not allowed as a deduction, comma, how much? Must how much uh, must be included included in Miss V's Miss V's gross income for the year for the year ended thirty one December twenty twenty one in respect of the annuity. So you'll be given such questions. How much then should we include in Ms. V's gross income for the year ended 31 December 2021 in respect of the annuity? So before I answer this question, I need to come to this formula here. You can see that Ms. V's purchase price of the annuity was not allowed as a deduction. So what it means is only interest portion is included, only the interest portion is included in gross income. And the interest portion is calculated using this formula. And this formula gives you interest per annum, not per month, per annum. So P 
is annual payment. P is not a monthly payment. So when you are working out this, you need to be very careful. So you, you say solution. Solution. And the solution goes like this. We have got P here equals. P should be an annual payment. So it's 12,000. 12, 1, 2, 3 times 12 months. Make it annual, which is equals 12, 1, 2, 3, multiply by 12. That's 144,000. And then N, N equals number of annual payments. In this case, number of annual payments is four years. And then A is the purchase price of the annuity. In this case, the annuity was purchased for 80,000. So with this formula here, we then say annual interest equals. So that's the formula, which is equals to. So if we can put this up, I simply say equal open bracket 144. And just take this, like say 144, multiply by 4. 144 multiply by 4. And then take out this. And then everything here divide by 4. So annual interest is 124. You can verify with your with your calculator there. The annual interest is 124,000. This is per year. This is per year because it's annual interest. Now the question says for the year ended 31 December 2021. Remember, she started receiving it on 1 October, so she can't get annual interest. She only gets three months interest for October, November, and December. So you say for the year, for the year ended, 31 December 2021, comma, only three months interest, three months flexible. Three months interest is taxable. You know, we are saying from October to December. From October. So uh, you are now saying equals three over 12. Multiply by 124. One so we are saying equals this times three over. So we put 31,000. So this is the answer that the examiner is looking for. So because most, most of your questions about the first 15 questions in your exam are multiple choice questions. Multiple choice. You would see this answer on A, this answer on the last option. And also, as a student, you can tell us that the PE annual, you can go to the PE 12,000. You know, one of the answer you got that of food. You get it. You know, one of the answer you got that of food again. So be super careful there. That's, that was about purchased annuities. Now, let us look at annuity from services rendered. Oh, it is still to start to die. They can go to NB. Old age annuity is exempt. Old age annuity is exempt. Is exempt. By that we are saying an elder, an elder, an elderly taxpayer, an elderly taxpayer is the one who is 65 years and above. That's an elderly taxpayer. If you are 55 years and above, you you are called an elderly taxpayer. So if you if you receive your annuity, it is exempt. 
Meaning, can our our elder as we never ask about the purchase price? Yaga bumi do say deduction here. Can I say ina? Ah no. Uno uno uno. I will take school. I think we will take it. It was same question. You know, that one one means V. Purchase price was allowed as a deduction. The IP annuity I take school. Time will take a one forty four. Multiply by three over two because I receive a I receive a twelve thousand per month for three months. Could I receive a thirty six thousand? Saga, that purchase price younger guy allow you a set deduction. Take takes her in full. I said, Miss V, watch our elder, a past in a teacher takes elder, so not what we are fifty five years and above. Making sense, all right. Then annuity, that, that one was purchased annuity. Then B, annuity for services rendered. Annuity for services rendered. E.g. But we want a pension. Waka waka. It's actually annuity from services rendered. E.g. we have to have a pension now. It's not exactly such an annuity. We have pension near. So the annuity is taxed in full. The annuity is taxed in full. That's, 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 that's the point there. However, 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 comma, Old age pension is exempt. If you are getting old age pension, it's exempt. So the annuity is taxed in full, but if you are an elder, old age pension is exempt. Get that? Allow me just to answer a WhatsApp message here. Sorry, I'm just answering a WhatsApp message. Okay. Then, sorry for that, continue. So you know, when you say, if you are an elderly person and they are getting pension, you, you don't get text. And you now know elderly, it's simply 55 years and above for the purpose of interpreting text. Then see annuity by gift or legacy. Annuity by gift or legacy. Now, you know, 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 Text is not going to our own senior so trained. So, so easy this subject. Annuity by way of gifts or legacy. Imagine, I annuity with our silver or a tinga, what a silver. Saka, you were going to want to receive annuity, what a silver. I'm going to tell you to go to the purchase price was not allowed as a deduction. I will see you won't go get a after. Saga e e unongo e tinongo take sign full. Change no one's legacy cannot give. Tinongo wa kuti tongo tin dini na ati receive anu it. Don't wonder that ah, diwe wa kui receive from now on. No dango kupa mahara. Saga una choga tinga. Saga chile geza kuti ah purchase price was not allowed as a deduction. Nuti wa usi waga tinga. Saga under the circumstances to you, this annuity is taxed in full. The annuity takes. Regardless, regardless of whether it is price, it is price was allowed as a deduction or not. 
regardless of whether the purchase price was allowed as a deduction or not. All right, so there you go. Okay. So there you go. Then, to end up, uh, now I'm going to say, I, I, I'm lost in the scheme of things. What are you doing? We are doing specific aspects of gross income. So there was annuities, that was one. So there are three types of annuities, purchased annuity, B, annuity for services rendered, and C, annuity by gift or legacy. Another specific aspect of gross income we want to talk about is fringe benefits. Fringe benefits so important that's number two baba sakuna anonzi my fringe benefits quite a lot of them mboni nyore leo mchat pa chat feature any example ye fringe benefit ya onosi type in the chat kana we ne any fringe benefit ya onosi ya type in the chat Air time. Yes, company car. You know, using company house. All these are fringe benefits. So we will not want to my benefits. Gross total gross income. So my income, my final tax. But they are they. The, the issue now is how are they valued and. How are they determined, so to speak? So slowly but surely, let us uh, let us actually take it home. So the first thing is uh, there must be there must be must be an employment contract. There must be an employment employment contract for fringe benefits to arise there must be an employment contract for fringe benefits to arise this point is so important you don't say there are fringe benefits if if there is no employment contract no, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't do it that way. Saka, iwe uka haya plamba, kuti plamba, uye mkubasa kwenye, uye uti fixi re water and, and refuse. Plamba uya, mumpa airtime, ayisi fringe benefit. Nekuti plamba asi employer, asi employee wenye. So there must be, an employment contract for fringe benefits to arise as evidenced by as evidenced by uh, evidenced by a letter of employment evidenced by contract of employment itself contract of employment employment itself contract of employment itself so we know that this is this is if we if we see the contract of employment itself we can tell that this is employment contract code of conduct code of conduct code of conduct and also the employee does not does not charge or bill employer for services rendered. The employer for services rendered. So these are the things that can tell us that this is an employment contract. You know, if you are an employee, you don't say at the end of every day, I will be the employer, I will invoice. You don't bill the employer for services rendered. You get that? Saka kuti ticha ure nyeze ma fridge benefits. Ayandoma conditions amfana utanga asetisfied. 
Any other relationship is known as independent contractor. Any other relationship on is independent independent contractor and is evidenced by is evidenced by you know it's evidenced by contractor issuing invoice for the job done contractor contractor issuing invoices for the job done job done you know that's an independent contractor you issue invoice for the job done um, and not bound by employer's code of conduct code of conduct so you can see now that and if you say you are an independent contractor there is no need to, there's nothing to talk about fringe benefits we don't talk of free benefits for an independent contractor. We only talk of free benefits if for a two, if there's an employee. You get that? So you will be asked these by the examiner. You need to understand this. In general, uh, let's say now valuation of, of free benefits. Valuation of free benefits. Evaluation of fringe benefits. How do we value this? It's so, so important. So we can say here, as a general rule, comma, as a general, as a general rule, comma, free fringe benefits valued by a reference a reference to the cost paid by the employer that's 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 how we value fringe benefits we value them by reference to the cost incurred by the employer what does that mean it means cost to the employer is the benefit in the end of the employee Incurred by the employer, incurred by the employer, is the benefit. Benefit in the end, in the end of the employee. So this is called a general rule. When you are valuing free uh, benefits, this is generally what we look at. However, 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 comma, the valuation the following fringe benefits, following fringe benefits, are uh, the valuations, let's say valuations of the following fringe benefits are an exception, exception to the general rule. General rule. So the valuations of the following fringe benefits are an exception to the general rule. What we are now going to look at are exceptions, meaning they don't follow through the general rule. Now, here, 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 here are the, the ones that we are talking about. Let's say A, airtime air time and data used by employee at home. Airtime and data paid, paid by company on behalf of 
employees warm use employees uh, warm use warm use so if if you are receiving airtime and data paid by the company on behalf of employees warm use what is the benefit so the benefit to the employee the benefit employee is 30 percent of the data you data you symbol is that the benefit to the employee is just 30 percent of the data a data and airtime paid for airtime paid for is that So, uh, then B of companies, use of companies, companies, use of companies. Now, if you are using companies, suppose uh, you are using companies and you are not paying rent. The value to the employee, the value to the employee, to the employee depends on whether house located in a municipal area or not it depends on whether the house we are talking about is it located in a municipal area or not the house if the house is located in a municipal area in a municipal area municipal area the benefit to the employee is the fair market render of the house. The benefit to the employee, the fair market render of the house foregone by the employer. Fair market rental of the house foregone by the employer. By the employer you know it's a it's it, it, it's a situation where we are saying you as him you as an employer you have a house and the house is in borrowed and you say your way employees should stay there and the employee is not paying rent so the rent that the employee is not paying because it's in a municipal area that is the benefit to the employee but notice there is an element here of foregone. There is an element of foregone. So what, what what we mean by foregone is suppose the suppose market rental, let's say market rental was uh, market rental, let's say market rental is one is it's 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 Three fifty thousand. I'm just putting my figures in 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 Zim dollar. And then employee pays. Employee pays. Employee pays a hundred thousand. If the employee is paying hundred thousand, we can't say the benefit is three fifty because the employee is paying something. The, the, if the employee is paying something, surely the benefit is 250 because this is what the employer is foregone. If the employee was paying nothing, it was going to be 350 You get it? That's the meaning of the word foregone. So expect in the exam to take note of these words. Now, continuing. We are saying uh, in a, in the house is in a municipal area. So we can continue and now say, if the house 
if the house located located uh, outside a municipal area or area comma then the benefit benefit the benefit is the lower of the lower of 12.5% 12, 12 of salary or salary or I mean and 7% of the cost of the house. You get it? Now, kune, kune, kune Zimbabwe outside a municipal area. Like Dombo Shara. The employer constructs houses in Dombo Shara there. There are no fair market rentals for the house there. They are, they are, you can't say this is a fair market rental for the house. So under the circumstances, the benefit is you need two sets of information. You take, you calculate 12 and a half percent of your salary and 7% of the cost of the house and take the lower. Take the lower of the two. All right, this. Uh, comma. The housing benefit is restricted. The housing benefit restricted to the value being reasonably 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 and justifiably justifiably received uh, received by the employee. Let me explain this part. So notice I am typing you, the section B of your exam. It's 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 section B of your exam. It's uh, seventy marks of typing. So don't say say when will you teach us typing? as if you are seeing me writing with a pen. This is how you type your answers as well. So I am actually ki killing two birds with one stone with what I am doing here. Okay. Now, let's say you live in Borodale and the room, the house has got 11 rooms or 12 rooms. And you're a bachelor, all you need is an answer. All you need is an answer. But we are, we are living in a house which has got 12 rooms. Clearly, the Zimra guys can't come there and say, what is the market render of the house? Suppose you are living alone in a 12 room house. You are a bachelor. This house belongs to the company. And all you are using is your answer, a single bed and steps a kitchen with a pantry and the answer. So, so under the circumstances, you can say the value I'm benefiting is the fair market render of the house. Ah, it will be too much for you. You we, we, we then, so an employee has a right to justify the actual value that the employee is deriving from the house. So if you are given that, even though the render is too, 50,000, but the employee is saying the only value I'm getting, if I can prove to you, is just 30,000. So we can't go by the fair market rent as if the employee is using the full house. But if the examiner is silent with that, just go for the full market rent. We assume that the employee is using the full house. You get what I'm saying, guys? Right. Then next. 
I'm, 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 I'm delineating my fringe benefits. I'm now on C. This was uh, C, it's now uh, motor vehicle benefit. Motor vehicle, motor vehicle benefit. Motor vehicle benefit. Now we are using a common vehicle. Clearly, there's a benefit that you get. So, so let us, it's like the benefit. The benefit, benefit in this case, value to the employee, value to the employee, employee, depends on the engine capacity of the vehicle. Depends on the engine capacity of the vehicle. Of the, ve of the vehicle. Of, of the vehicle. And is gazetted annually by the legislature by the legislature. It is gazetted annually by the legislature. For 2022, for year ended, for the year ended, that one December 2021, comma, fringe benefits, fringe the motoring benefits are as follows. The motoring benefits were as follows. The motoring benefits were as follows. So this was for the year ended 31 December 2022. So allow me to open, uh, you know, uh, I have, uh, so these you can download, they can be downloaded from Simra website. I'm sure they are already downloaded for me with the admin team. So these are the motoring benefits. Let me open, it's, it's like a picture, it's in a picture format for motoring benefits, so allow it to open. Allow it to open. So, don't worry, it's opening. So there you go. These are the deemed benefits for the year ended 31 December for 2021 annually. Deemed monthly value. Oh, well, so this is, this is, okay. Let me just verify my figures here. You know, we make use of Zimra website anyway. Zimra. Zimra. Motoring benefits. Motoring uh, benefits. Benefits for 2021. They are easily obtainable from the Zimra website. Uh, let me see. Things from office. Right, let me see. All right. So you see here that this this these are the benefits. And these are actually the annual benefits, not monthly benefits. So If I can copy and sub, uh, perhaps I will be able to paste. Let me see if I can copy and paste. You know, some are in US dollars, some are in in in, in Zim dollars because the payments are being paid in a variety of currencies. So no wonder why they 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 have that. Okay. 
So you can see it's it's, it's typing in a it's it's pasting in a very very strange way. But still, for the purposes of what we intend to do, we are not in any way disturbed. But I just want you to notice that the benefits depends on the engine capacity of the vehicle. This is in Zim dollars. This is in US. So let me open this picture here. So that's how you value motoring benefits. You won't, you, 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 some of these things you'll be given in the exam. So there's no need necessarily to, 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 to cram these. No, you'll be given these. So engine capacity, you know, of 1,500, you know, the engine capacity is what we always refer to as, oh, this person has got KB250, whatever. Those are the engine capacity. And it determines how you can enjoy, uh, how you can enjoy using that vehicle. Because if, if capacity clearly is, is higher, you enjoy the vehicle more than the one with a lower capacity, with, with, with an engine with a lower capacity. So these are the benefits. And it's important to know that these are annual benefits. I'm sure you are having this. So can someone take a screenshot? You know, when you want, when you are taking a screenshot, all you have to do is you come to the, to, to, you come to the bottom right of your, bottom right of your Skype, you hit the more button and click take a snapshot. So can someone do that whilst, I, whilst I'm putting this up? Can someone take a snapshot of this? Bottom right and choose take a snapshot. I'm waiting. Okay. Good. So remember this, this works end in the end. As you are playing the video, as you are playing the video, you, you, you equally be seeing this. So we have it. So the beauty of taking a snapshot is once you take it, you can then go over it without um, without even data. Okay. Uh, continuing. Continuing. Uh, so where I have pasted here, let me just undo the, this mess and continue in a proper proper typing thing. That was motoring benefit. Now let me let me proceed, let me have some comments concerning motoring benefit. NB. NB means nyato bata. You know, nyato bata this part. All right. So no motoring benefit arises. No motoring benefit arises when the vehicle when the vehicle is exclusively used for employer's business exclusively being used for employer's business you know John you know, you know, the only not drive you know deliver shanti after work but it won't do not send an Iokumba. Clearly, a pana benefit up because I wanna anything is you are just having this vehicle, you can't use it for your own errands. Two, there is no benefit. There is no benefit. There is no benefit if the employee pays pays the employer for the use of the vehicle for the use of the vehicle please take note of that if the employee pays the employer for the use of the vehicle there's no motoring benefit like you 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 use your company your a company car but if it breaks down you pay you repay it yourself you you you, you pay for eg pay for repairs and Feel well, you do it yourself. You, that so, so there's no benefit to you. Pay. Another thing is the benefits. The benefits indicated. The benefits indicated. 
indicated are annual benefits, are annual benefits, and can be time apportioned. They can be time apportioned, you know. They can be time apportioned for periods less than a year. Periods less than a year. So if you started using the vehicle on 1 October, suppose the vehicle was, yes, 2,500 cc. The benefit is not 108, rather it's 108,000 multiplied by 3 over 12, because you only used it for three months. You get that? If you use it for a month, divide by 12. You get that? Another thing is, Motoring benefit, the motoring benefit can be apportioned, apportioned between between business, business and private use of the vehicle and private use of the vehicle using the ratio of mileages. Using the ratio of mileage mileages. So what do we mean by that? For example, let's say let's say the car in question. Let's say the uh, example. Uh, yeah, the car in question, car, it's a, it's, 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 it's Ford. Let's say it's Ford with engine, with engine, Ford with engine, 3,300 3, 3, cc. And then started using it started using it on uh, 1 July, 1 July 2021, the business mileage, business mileage, business mileage was 30,000 kilometers and private mileage Private mileage, private mileage uh, was twenty thousand kilometers. Now you are given this data set. Then the question then is, what the fringe benefit? This is what you are given, and then you are being, you are asked to calculate what the motoring benefit. That's the motoring, motoring benefit. The motoring benefit here, it will be a matter of, say, of doing it like this solution. Benefit is attributed to private mileage. If you are doing business mileage, there's no benefit. Benefit is attributed to attributed to private mileage, private mileage, or so it's IE, um, you use the ratio, right? So it's a matter of saying 20,000 over 50,000 was total mileage, it's 50, 30 plus 20. Then you multiply by benefit of a vehicle, which is 3,300, meaning excess of 3,000, it's 144,000 here. So you multiply by 144,000. And then remember, this person started using the vehicle on 1 July. So you then multiply July, so you then multiply by 6 over 12. So by 6 over 12, we are saying from July. You get that? So you get the answer there is, is equals 20, 1, 2, 3, 
over 50, 123, times 144, 123, times 6 over 12. So the benefit, it will be, two, it will be 28,300. So these are typical taxation exams. Make sure you, you know these and you also you keep, you pay attention to dates. You pay, if, if, if it's a multiple choice question, on the A, there will be 144 times 20 over 50. This one, when you time a portion, it will be given elsewhere amongst the response options. Then, remember, we are going through fringe benefits and we have done motoring benefit, motor vehicle benefit. And I'm taking time to explain this. Now, there is what is called the sale of vehicle benefit, which is, oh, sorry, this is what, is it? What was the use of company house? Okay. There is sale of vehicle benefit. That's D. Sale of vehicle, vehicle benefit. Now, the question that arises is say, what is this type of a benefit? The sale of vehicle benefit. So this arises, this arises when the employee buys the vehicle he or she has been using, buys the vehicle he or she has been using from the employer. If the employee buys a vehicle which he or she has been using from the employer, it's, 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 this arises when from the employer at a price, at a price which is, which is below, below the fair market value of the, of the vehicle, fair market value of the vehicle. Together. Suppose the vehicle you 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 are you are using a KB two fifty with a vehicle with a with a, with 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 um fair market price of eight hundred and ninety thousand. Remember, I'm 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 using RTGS figures eight hundred and ninety thousand. That is the fair value. And then the employer says, just pay uh just pay. Uh, 120,000 for that vehicle. You know, you, 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 they buy these vehicles with at peanuts. So clearly, 770 becomes the benefit because the employer has lost that amount. So it's a matter of saying the difference, the difference is the benefit to the employee. It's the benefit to the employee. You know that the difference then is the benefit to the employee. So important. The difference is the benefit to the employee. Now that the difference is the benefit to the employee, uh, another thing arises. The benefit is exempt. The benefit exempt when we are saying exempt we are saying not text not text not text and not included in gross income and not included in gross income the benefit is exempt meaning not text if employee is an elder the employee is an elder so if you are an elder, like you're an employee who is 55 years and above, you now, you now know that 55 years plus and above. So if, if you are an employee who is 55 years and above, we don't take this particular benefit. Right. Oh, okay, you are now, 
we are now actually getting used to taking screenshots. You can actually take screenshots of everything. Uh, or it's, 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 it's a matter of saying, say, we wa I want to take a screenshot on this, of this, of this, of this, of this, of give like screenshot of the topics, screenshot of, screenshot of, screenshot of, I can do that on the go. All right. That sale of vehicle benefits, you now understand that it's when an employer buys a vehicle that you have been using from an employee, from the, I mean, an employee buys the vehicle that he has been using from the employer at a price which is below the fair market value of that particular vehicle. The difference is the benefit that you are getting. But if you are an elder, that benefit again is not stake. Then staff loans. Staff loans. E. Staff loans. You know, staff loans. So, uh, I, you know, when when we googled just now, it was it was given here. Uh, right. Let me just copy this. Copy this. Up here. Copy. No, it, it's important also to Google things up. Right? Okay. So this is this is about benefits. Now, if you are seeing the figures like US dollar, you know, when you are calculating tax, uh, the practicality of it is some companies pay in US dollar, some in what? Uh, so if you are calculating the US, you use US. But here, yeah, let us remove the US dollar thing because that's not what we are discussing here. Let us just focus on Zim dollar. That, that is more beneficial to us. That is more beneficial to us. Right? Right. I don't even know why I, I copied it because I'm deleting everything that I copied. So for the benefit to arise if the loan exceeds 8,000. In other words, for loans which are 8,000 and below, there's no benefit. That's one thing. Another point is benefit. The benefit the interest is for gold, by the employer, by the employer uh, and is calculated as follows. Calculated as follows. So this is how you calculate a, 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 a loan benefit. So you say interest, interest. So you say loan amount, loan, meaning the loan that, that you have, multiply by, uh, open bracket, LIBOR, LIBOR, plus 5%. The loan multiplied by the LIBOR plus 5%. This gives you interest per year. This is annual interest. It's annual, meaning if, if you get a loan, uh, if you get a loan in, 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 October, in October, one October, you multiply by three. What is LIBOR? LIBOR stands for London Interbank Offer Rate. London Interbank Offer Rate. And this rate 
will be given by the in the exam. LIBOR will be given. So 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 let's say let's say loan. Uh, before I, I give an example, let me finish giving you the notes. No loan, so no loan benefit arises if loan is below eight thousand dollars. Same dollars, and also continue with our NBs. No staff loan benefit arises. No staff loan benefit arises. If the loan, if the loan is used, used to finance, to finance education, education or medication, medication of the employee, employee, comma, spouse, comma. Oh. In other words, there is no loan that arises if, 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 if you use that, there is no benefit that arises if you use that loan to finance education, be it or medication, be it of yourself as an employee, even of your spouse who doesn't even work for that company. There's no loan, well, you can't say I'm benefiting from that. No, there's no loan benefit. So here you get a loan. You get a loan on 1 October 2021. 1 October 2021 for 1 million dollars, zim dollars. And then you pay, it uh, pays, employee pays, interest employee pays uh, interest. You pay interest of Let's say you are paying interest of 3% on this loan. And then, uh, and then LIBOR for the year, LIBOR for the year was 2.5%, 2.5% and used, uh, used the half of the loan or undergrad studies, undergrad studies. Yeah, you are using half of the loan for undergrad studies. What is the loan benefit? Loan benefit. You get it? So it's a matter of saying solution. There is no benefit if you use the loan to finance education. So solution you are saying interest, annual interest as well, annual interest, annual, annual interest here equals loan times. So in this case, you are now saying equals 100, one, two, three. One, two, three. You multiply that by 50% because you use the half to finance the education. And then you then say times open bracket. Interest is liable, which is 2,5%, 2,5% plus 5%. But remember, you are also paying 3%. So if you are paying the employer 3%, you subtract the 3%. The answer you get here, sorry, please, can you hit the mute button? The answer you get here is per annum, but you got the loan on 1 October. So you say multiply by 3 over 12. So the answer becomes equals 500, 1, 2, 3, times 7,5 minus 3, you get 4,5, 4,5 percent times 3 over 12. Always take notes of debts. So this becomes your interest on this particular loan.
So we are actually moving at a pace which is pretty cool. Then there are, of course, there are other fringe benefits like school fees benefits. Benefit. School fees benefit. So that one was on E, and so this one is F. School fees benefit. What is this? You know, it arises when uh, arises arises when an employer pays school fees school fees on behalf on behalf of employees' children on behalf of employees' children. That's a school fee benefit. It is taxed in. It is it is taxed in the ends in the ends of the employer or of the employee. Right. So this is a school fee. If if you are helping your children, school children school fees being paid by the employer. Of course, it's your benefit. It will be taxed in on your behalf. However, for a school, however, for a school, we mean university, etc., university or college, university or college, university or college, comma, 50% of the benefit, 50% of the benefit of benefit to teaching and non-teaching staff non-teaching staff 50 percent of the benefit to, to teaching and non-teaching staff is exempt up, up to a maximum of up to a maximum of three children. Okay, so I want to end my discussion with this part. With this part, so important. If you are an employee of a school and you have got three children, I say you have got, let, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have got, you have got how many children, number of children? You have got four children. They pay equal school fees. And then school fees per child, school fee per child. Let's say these, they are paying equal school fees. School fee per child is 600,000. And then, with school fees per child being 600,000 and the person here is a teacher 600,000 is paid by the paid by employer so the your occupation is it you are a teacher now the question is what is the uh, benefit to be included in gross income what what benefit benefit is taxable so when you are answering such a question it's a matter of saying solution solution so total benefit total benefit that you are getting it simply equals four times 600, four times 600. Four times 600,000, which is equals four multiplied by 600,000. This is the total benefit, but there is an exempt benefit. Exempt benefit, this one is not taxed. It 
limited to 50 percent of the of the amount paid 50 percent of the benefit to the teaching and non-teaching staff is exempt up to a maximum of three children so we are saying exempt benefits i open my brackets and i say 50 percent multiplied by 600,000 multiplied by three children. I'm now saying equals minus 0 0.5 multiplied by 600,000 multiplied by three. This benefit is not taxed, it's exempt. So what it means is taxable school fee benefit becomes this, uh, it becomes this now taxable school fee benefit becomes 1.5. This is taxable benefit. Taxable benefit. You, you, you get that. So this is basically how tax it. Oh, just give me two seconds, so that, two minutes so that I just finish off on the last benefit, which is passage benefit. That's G. Passage, passage benefit. Passage benefit. Passage benefit. What is this benefit? It, uh, it arises when the employer pays the relocation expenses on behalf of the employee. It arises when the employer pays, re pays for relocation expenses relocation expenses on behalf of the employee relocation expenses on behalf of the employee we call this passage benefit if the employer is paying for relocation expenses on behalf because it, when we are when you choose location it's ex, it's exempt it's exempt if a relocation was at the instigation instigation of the employer if the relocation was at the instigation of the employer such relocation expenses are exempt then last but not least h Use of company furniture. Use of company company furniture. No, there are instances when you use company furniture like laptops, uh, like any, even even if you are using if even if you are occupying a fully furnished company house. Companies nowadays they buy furniture, sofas and everything on behalf of you as an employee if you are using the company they finish it for you and if that is the case the benefit to you as the employee the benefit uh, to the employee benefit to the employee is calculated as eight percent of the cost furniture just eight percent of the cost of that furniture all right so you know what our first topic which was on gross income is done which was on gross income is done so you can tell that if you miss lectures make an effort to play the video and you can tell that taxation is easy because as you say, you were, you were seeing, I was just saying stuff, just like that. Like I'm saying stories. Be inspired and copy your say in that regard. Please be inspired and copy your tutor in that regard. Uh, you have done your level best in choosing your tutor. So there's no need for you to worry. All you have to do is to obey. I'm sure I have said quite a lot of things that you can't say I have already understood everything that says said. 
oh, I will stream this video tomorrow on my YouTube channel and send you a video link. Play that video for the rest of the week. Now, when it comes to next week, when your colleagues have also played the video, I will then give you the assignment. I will then give you the assignment. So it's well in order. It's well in order, my, my wonderful team. It's well in order. I must first comment by saying, I'm impressed by your attendance. Please keep up attending. And as you shall play this video for those who have not attended, make sure in subsequent lectures you do attend. This is online learning education. It's now the new normal. You, 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 you are free to invite your colleagues. On that note, allow me to terminate the recording, but I'm still available if you have got any questions.